Hi! Thanks for joining me today for Bring Literacy to Life with Technology. Come on! Hi everybody! It's Ashley Prim here to present with you Smackdown. Let's bring these lessons to life with technology. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of the Neotech Conference this year. As a Michigan native, it was so great to be invited back up home to present with you. And we'll go through the slides and you guys can um, follow along. So the, um, the first slide that I wanted to share with you um, is uh, why I chose this one. So I chose this session to do today because I wanted to be able to bring you these fast paced uh, technology and integrated ideas, uh, but I wanted the students to be engaged. So I'm going to share a lot with you uh, for the next half hour or so. Uh, so sit back, relax and enjoy. So a little bit about me, I am a digital integration facilitator here in North Carolina uh, at Moore County Schools, and I've been in education for 19 years. Uh, I started out in a fourth grade classroom, and I was a, a media coordinator for about seven years. So. So lots of experience. Um, I'm also AIJ certified, so there's some gifted, um, some gifted pieces I'll be pulling in for you as well. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about Moore County Schools. Uh, it's in the Sand Hills of North Carolina. It's close to Fort Bragg, um, and we serve um, pre-K to 12th grade. Um, our one-to-one -one devices are only with kindergarten through 12th, um, and we have our kindergarten and first graders on iPads, which is a bit more developmentally appropriate for them. Um, and then we have our second through 12th graders on Chromebooks, just so you kind of get an idea of what technology we have in the district that we're using. Um, so so another piece of the why is just the literacy, the hand in hand um, with engaging in the writing piece. Um, we want to be able to show you some differentiation while I'm here today. And then um, the choice and ownership and collaboration. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to give up my, um, my teaching you know, I want them to be able to still be um, engaged in learning, but to give them a little bit more choice and ownership of what they're doing um, while I can still control the standards. So if you would like today's slides, uh, you can definitely go ahead and um, it's bit.ly slash edtechsmackdown and the S is capitalized, or you can um, click this and you can have the slides for later. They're also in the um, session for you. So I want to show you this amazing resource here, uh, and I'm going to share this with you guys so you can see. So uh, this website, the Classroom Screen website, if I launch it, this is one of my favorite uh, websites to have up on the screen. Just in, in, in the beginning of the day, I can choose the background, so I can choose where I want to be that day. Maybe I want to be in um, the pyramids, or maybe I just want that nature photo. And then one of the really great things is I can do a random sorter here and I can just throw up a few names here um, and David and it will sort these for me um, and you can paste into that so if you have a list it'll paste that uh, but this is a nice little random sorter there which is I love it and then I also wanted to show you there's a whole bunch of, of um pieces that it will do for you. But my timer, when I put my timer up here, um, if I switch this to play a song, it'll play a different sound. <laughs> And so my kiddos love to hear like the different cool sounds that it'll play when it's done. And I really like that piece. I can change that and make it however I want. Uh, but you can add anything to this. I could put like a sound level. Um, and so it'll show... <laughs> It'll show the different sound that uh, it, it says I'm really loud or I'm not being loud enough. Um, and then you can do fun things with it. But that's such a great uh, a great one to share that uh, I use all the time. And then we'll come back to this for you. Uh, so, so that's the classroom screen. And uh, if you're not using Flipgrid, I just want to encourage you to check it out. Uh, I love it for... Um, 
for any kind of device, so it's very device friendly. If I have um, some students at home, you know, or with mom's cell phone, um, they, they can get on with, with anything. They just need to go to the Flipgrid code um, and I can create anything in it. I can tell them I want them to talk about um, their nonfiction text feature was a lesson I did with it. So the students had to work through the problem. We did a whole lesson on it uh, and then they had to explain to the camera their text feature and what they learned about it. Um, I love it for math too. They can explain the different math problems to each other and then they can all go back in and watch. Um, one of the really nice ways that it keeps everything organized is in groups and then in that group you can have multiple flip grids. So it's very organized uh, and for me I'm at multiple schools so it really does help uh, keep me organized with different schools and different places and different classrooms. One of the other really great features is it gives you a QR code. And so these um, adorable little nonfiction animal exploration creators, they did a book uh, and then they did a poster and they had put their QR code in their book and then they put their QR code out in the hallway so that people that were walking by could check it out. Um, and people that were reading their book had that option too. So to hear their voice, actually sharing some of their facts about their animal. Um, and this is second grade, so uh, it can be done with any grade level. Um, these are two really great features that um, we have been using with our Connect program. Um, it's totally free. So you just sign in uh, and it's totally free program. And I'm just going to sign in with my Google um, and it's totally free and you can screen record. So you don't have to use a Google me or um, a zoom, you know, to record. I could just online record um, with, with any account, with any email account. You do have to sign up. Um, and then Vocaroo is another option that for the sound. Uh, so sometimes you want to be able to test your students. I want to be able to hear them reading, um, but I'm not I'm not able to sit right there with them while they're reading or um, sharing their vocabulary words or the, those, um, you know, you maybe want to hear those phonemes that they're trying to say. Um, so this is a, a great website that you can use for that. And you just, it opens right up to Vocaroo and then I can click the sound recording and I'm gonna allow, I can record, record. And then the best part about it is I can save it and I can save it as a QR code or I can download it and it'll save um, as an MP3 file, which is really cool um, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to be able to hear their sounds. And then they, um, my older students can email it to me. Um, sometimes we use that for when they put them in their slides, um, their Google Slides, they'll, they'll be able to put their Vocaroo into their Google Slides. Uh, the next one that I wanted to share was some free copyright music. Uh, this is really powerful if you are having them, like I said, do anything with Google Slides. Um, Bend Sound is a good one, Gemendo. And if, you, um, if you've heard of these ones, I left the actual website so you could see them um, on there. Um, there's some that you can't broadcast outside of school and they remain free. Uh, and, you, and you'll check those out. All right, so this is so amazing. The um, the QR code generator. I use QR codes for so many things, um, but I love it. I love having them move around the room, or or possibly the school um, if that's an option for you. But different read alouds with QR codes. And one of the great things is if you have a Google, uh, if you're logged into Google Chrome. There is a share button at the top of your browser window. Uh, and if you click that share button, it'll make that QR code uh, for you. It'll give you the option to make whatever website you're in. Um, and if you guys can see that, so I clicked, you can't see the top of my browser window, but next to the www part, there's a little share button. It's like a little arrow and you can choose um, to copy the link or you can choose a QR code. And that is so powerful uh, if I just have a website that I want to share. So book cafes, um, when I was in the library, I used book cafes often uh, for, you know, fun Fridays or just activities with um, the different curriculum standards that we were doing. So this is an example of a weather um, and we just pulled 
whole bunch of stories about weather and they got to choose uh, the cafe that they wanted to go visit that day. So this was an example of some Dr. Seuss and some Thanksgiving ones um, that we had done. So such a powerful cartoon to be able to um, to explain that sometimes it's okay to just let them read. So I've done all of these things. Can I please just read now for fun? And so we want to remember that sometimes that's okay. That that's we just want them to be able to read for fun. Uh, so this phenomenal teacher, um, Miss Day, she does this great kindergarten lesson uh, with. Uh, with her kindergarten students, and it, it has to go back to weather, like we were talking about for our reading cafe. Uh, this is the only app, the Do Ink app, that I'm going to talk about today that is something you have to pay for. Um, so it's a little pricey, but still worth it, uh, in my opinion. So what this teacher did was she had the students um, say three sentences, and their first sentence is, hello, my name is, and then she had them pick a place that they wanted to travel to. So it could have been anywhere in the world that they wanted to go. So this little girl, you can see she chose Disney. And then at home, they needed to research the weather in that place or in that location. So the student would have to say then it is whatever degrees they had researched in that location of wherever they wanted to go. So this is just an example. Hello, my name is Amy. I'm at and it's hard to hear, but she says um, the, her name, and then she says where she is. So um, some of the stories that we've tied into this unit are um, in the meteorologist in me, which is a great one, or cloudy with a chance of meatballs, which is so funny. Uh, so you can see this was the step-by-step -step on what she did. She chose, um, the students had to choose a place they wanted to visit. The homework for that week was that the students had to look up with their parents at home what the weather was like, and then they were able to send in the weather props for a Friday. Now, she um, had done this multiple years, so she had like a big tub of like all kinds of um, umbrellas and sunshine hats and all kinds of sunglasses and whatnot. Um, and she actually had a parent volunteer uh, to come in and film this. So she didn't even have to like, they just filmed it right outside of her classroom door. And I'll, I'll tell you that in just a moment. But let's watch this one. So she's in Hawaii, and they're hard to hear. Um, she didn't have them mic'd, but that's totally fine. Um, so what she did was she actually just had uh, the green screen on her door, and, and I'll tell you that in the next slide. It is $4.99, um, so a little bit pricey for an app, but she just put it on one device, and she you can put it on your cell phone, you can put it on anything, and she was able to do it. Um, some of the other ones that, that will do that is Flipgrid will also do a green screen, um, and then if you have an iPhone or a MacBook or an iPad, the iMovie program is a free program that will do green screen as well. Uh, so you don't have to have the app to do it. And then she just bought a, a very cheap green tablecloth um, from Amazon and she put it on her door and the students were able to, she was able to do it from the door. Um, this this um, StickBot app is also another um, green screen app that will work fine and this is a free app. So, so this one will work too. Um, and this is just an example of some of my students that were using it. So you can see they um, have those little stick bot guys. And you don't need to buy the little stick bot guys to do it at all. Uh, so how they did it, she put um, the green screen on the back of her classroom door. You could use a bulletin board. She had all the stuff, and then she had a parent volunteer come in, and they were able to film in some crazy, amazing places. Um, And she said next time she did it, she'd have them be a lot louder. Um, this is the green screen tutorial video. I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, but she does explain exactly what to do in the green screen tutorial video. It's in the slides for you. Um, my... Um, one of my amazing media coordinators shared this great trick. So the mid is for the vid and the bottom is for the background. And that is such a great trick for when the students are working through them. Um, and we've had lots of students do these. Um, so different students stood on different um, 
on different places and different timelines and different temperatures. Um, and so this was a standard that we were focusing on with information um, to be able to share it and present it. And so these are um, videos that you can go through and check out. Uh, and they're... They tell you, they tell you everything they're doing. So we did um, some fables with some third graders. And so the students were able to pick a background that they wanted, uh, just a picture. They could um, color it or they could um, find it somewhere online. And then we, they had to read their fable to the camera um, and, and, and share their fable that they had chosen. So very powerful. Um, here, back to the book cafe, so we talked about the weather, there's Dr. Seuss, and um, these again were Miss Day, and you can do all kinds of fun things. She actually had them dress up like Dr. Seuss, um, she, she did all kinds of fun activities with food uh, for them, and so when you talk about engaging and making it fun, um, something so simple as just a reading cafe could be awesome. So Seesaw is free. There is a paid version of it, but it is free. Um, so I have some links in here for you. And uh, one of my first grade teachers, Mrs. Curry, put this together as far as being able to schedule lessons. Um, you can schedule things in Seesaw, which is very helpful. So I'll play that for you. Hey, so, hey, so this, this is, is my class, class um, and, I've and I've got activities, activities already, already scheduled, scheduled right, now right now that the, that the students, students are doing. doing. And, and so, so I've scheduled, scheduled um, um, these, are these are activities that are already have scheduled, scheduled for next, for next week. week. But, but if, if I wanted, I wanted to schedule, schedule activities, activities for next, next week, week, I go, I go to, to my activity, activity library. library. My, my library. library. I do, I have, do folders have folders set, set up. up. Down, Down here, here, I have recurring, recurring activities. activities. Literacy, literacy and math. And, math. and the recurring, the recurring activities, activities folder are just, are just things, things that I typically that I assign, assign every week. week. Like, like I, I assign rainbow, rainbow words, words on Wednesday, Wednesday because, because this is a day, of course, of course, that, I course that I have planning here at school. school. So, so I'm going to go ahead and assign, assign this for this next, next week. week. Um, um, let me let just go ahead. I'm going to assign it to all my students. I typically put this in the literacy folder. So I'm so just going to check, check that. that. And I'm going to schedule, schedule it right, right here, here so, so that the, the kids, kids don't, don't do this, do this right, right away. away. So, so assign it on a specific day. day. I'm going to put this on next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. And I'm going to stop there so you can um, kind of get the idea of how she did that. One of the other great pieces with Seesaw is that it has a community um, that is free. So you can pull vetted teacher-developed lessons um, or standards, uh, standard-based lessons right there from the community. So um, very, very cool uh, feature within Seesaw. Another reason that I like it uh, as far as engagement is that it allows me to 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 choose how I want the students to submit work. So if I want them to go make a video, they can actually make a video within Seesaw. And if I want them to snap a picture of it, they can do that. Maybe they want to add a note to it. Um, these are different vetted uh, places to go for more information about Seesaw if you are wanting to know more about how it works or what it does. Uh, one of my teachers uses this um, Seesaw program as a fluency check. So the the Sorry, the, the worksheet is posted there, and then the students have to go in and read it for them and put the, um, the actual audio on there, and it's very easy for them to do. If I go back, you can see they just choose that audio uh, choice, um, the, the video choice, or the um, there's an audio feature in it. They can just choose that choice and add their audio voice to it, um, or you as a teacher can add the audio voice to it for yourself uh, as as you're giving the directions. So, um, so this teacher did it here where she had them put the little audio file at the bottom of all the spaces, um, or you can have them put it here multiple times. But it, it can be very powerful for those students that um, that you're not able to sit with, but you still need to get you know those plans and those um, different sounds. You still need to hear them for your for your younger students. So very helpful. 
<laughs> so this is her directions here with her rainbow words that you just saw in that video. And she has the directions play for them. So you click the play button, the student would click the play button, and then they would be able to see um, the actual worksheet and they would be able to hear their teacher giving them the directions. So that can be really um really powerful as well. Uh, now this part of it is in the paid version, uh, but but still I wanted to just reference it for you. So in the paid version of Seesaw, you can use the um, standard based and you can actually assign them and assign skills to each assignment and then it'll score those skills. So you um, can tell it what you want it to score and it will score those skills for you. So if I had a parent teacher conference, I could pull up, you know, Elise or Bella or whoever and I could show them, well, here's how they were doing on those assignments. Um, and it's a quick grade book reference for you to be able to know exactly how they're doing. So in the version here, you'll see it here when you are in your edit activity. Um, this is her activity and you will just edit the skills part at the very, very bottom. That's where you would put it. And then if you wanted to add it to a folder, like she showed in the video how she had everything organized in folders, you could edit it and change it to a folder. Um, you can also assign it to just certain students. So if there's just certain students I want to see, I can just assign it to them too. So a little bit about reading and writing. Uh, let's slide into reading and writing. Uh, one of the things that was so helpful when I was teaching writing, uh, I taught fourth grade writing and I mean, I still teach writing, but uh, with my fourth graders, I used what I called an FCA and it was a focus correction area for that particular week or unit or month or whatever your writing topics are. Um, so some of my FCAs may have been stay on topic, sentence structure, um, use nouns, you could put, um, you know, capital letters, whatever your um, focus was for that particular lesson or unit of writing. Um, and I chose three and then you just graded them based off of whether they stayed on topic. Um, so if they stayed on topic, then, you know, they got a 90, they um, stayed on topic and they did this, then they, um, or vice versa, they got a 100 if they did all of it, um, a 90 if they just did one, you know, they just forgot um, some of them, or an 80 or 70 um, based off of how many RCAs you had. Um, and you, if you don't grade them with number grades, it still was a quick checklist, but that way it gave me a target of what I was looking at. So, Yes, the spelling on this one student may have been atrocious, but I wasn't looking at spelling. I was only looking at whether they were staying on topic this time. Um, maybe next time I'll check more spelling. So it kind of gave me as the teacher um, a guideline, but then it also helped the students feel more comfortable with their writing because they knew I'm not going to be checking this. I'm going to be checking only their use of nouns because that's part of our vocabulary or part of our ELA unit that we're working on. Um, so the story starter kits, they are a Lego kit, um, and Lego has, I believe, uh, stopped making them, but the website is still so great, and I've linked it here for you, and I'm going to share it here. So, uh, to get them started, you always hear that, I don't know what to write about, I don't know what to write about, um, and obviously you want to give them a little bit of direction, but I really want their writing and not necessarily I want to know exactly, um, you know, I, I need to have a writing piece. I need to have a writing sample to be able to look at. Um, so if we're a writing adventure or fantasy stories or even a Scrabble one, I'll show you, um, the Scrambler Up one. But let me just show you what it looks like. So if I click on it and I could type my name, so I'll type my first name and I'm going to choose what grade I'm in. Um, and and I can spin the wheel here. And so I spin the wheel <laughs> and it gives me different pieces that I can write about. So today I'm gonna write about a list of foods for a curious bat who finds a hidden room. Now I can reset this one. So if I don't want that one, uh, I can reset it and I can find something I want. Who builds a tree? So it's includes that this curious bat is going to be in his tree house. Um, and it at least gives the student a starting point 
of where to go. At least here is an idea and it makes it engaging and fun and they like to be able to choose. Um, and then what's really cool is you can send it as a postcard or a letter. You can choose how you want uh, to write your story. So I could choose a postcard. Maybe I want to choose a newspaper article. Maybe it's just a notebook story. Um, and then I click next. And it gives me my notebook here, and I can type right here on this page. Um, and I can explain it, and I can type it, and I can and tell all about it. And then, so I'm just going to put curious that. Um, and you tell them how long you want. So you have two words. Maybe they need to write 20 words. Whatever you give them as their option. Um, and then I'm going to click done writing and it will put it on my paper for me with my date. And so I would often just have my students um, take a quick copy, uh, snap a quick picture of this for me, and then um, put it in their seesaw. But they, they can do however you want to share it. Maybe you just want to see it um, on their computer. Uh, maybe you want them to email it to you, however you choose to, to have them do it um, and share it with you. But such an amazing thing just to get them to start their writing process, because sometimes that is where the struggle is. Like, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to write about. Well, here, let's write about something fun here. Uh, so just some options there. Uh, I have some typing and keyboarding lessons and all of these lessons, I'll share with you where they can be found at the end. Um, but I would often tell my students, I don't want you to be typing, you know, like, a, like pecking like a chicken where they're just typing with two hands. I want you to be able to type. So these were lessons that, um, that have all been vetted by teachers that, that are fun for them uh, to be able to type and practice their typing skills. So that kind of goes with our um, writing, kind of goes back to our writing piece. Um, okay, so some STEM books. Um, so I used to teach in Michigan and the Wien Risa program up there in Michigan actually has a vetted website with all these amazing books and resources. And this website is just too cool to not show off to the whole world. Uh, so what we do is we would click on the story and it will open up the story. You can choose the different resources that go with it. Um, I can choose all the different resources that go with it. Or if I go back to this tab, I can click on um, the resources and it opens up the same link that I just showed you. Uh, with the different resources there. So the books are not on there, um, but that's okay because, you know, if you have a copy of the book, you can get a copy of the book. Um, but such an amazing tool. And there's there's a whole bunch of STEM-related lessons that go with those different stories. And what a great way to pull in that literacy, to pull in that reading piece um, to the STEM lessons that you're already doing or that you might be doing. Uh, okay, so then the other one that I wanted to show you was the reading journeys. When you go to this website, it will launch the hub for all the reading journeys, books, the levels reading books that you need for the different grade levels. Um, so, so amazing. If you are working with those leveled readers and those little students, you know how powerful that piece can be, um, how much you need to have those different leveled readers. And so that those are the, the old journey set. If you, your, your school may still use them, um, but the, they go with um, each theme part of the, 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 whole, the whole set for the Houghton Mifflin. Uh, this is from the Florida Center for Reading, and these are all different uh, rhyming. The, the phonological awareness that some of our students um, may be struggling with, and what I've been finding is even some of my third and fourth grade students are struggling with it, not just my little students who normally it's the, you know, kindergarten, first grade, and they first come in, they're learning these, um, but because of COVID, I've been noticing that that's kind of leaning into second grade a little bit more and to third and fourth grade. Um, so these are ways to go back through them and to be able to kind of go back through that um, the alliterations and the rhyming, um, the different sentence structure pieces that go with that. And so those there's different grade levels that are all here. Uh, and I can show you what it looks like. Um, so when I click on it, there's a whole bunch of different ones. And that's just the top part of them. There's different matching card games for um, phonemic isolation, phonemic segmenting. Um, and if you are... Uh, 
if you if you are one of the um, you know lower elementary teachers, you know how important these are. Um, so different letter sounds, and there's just so many here. And so these go, these actually go to um, a game that the students play or to the phonemic cards. And I mean, there's 53 different pieces here that I could make copies of or pull um, and go through with my students. So, so, so cool uh, for, for that website if you need more help with that, um, with those reading intervention pieces. Um, and obviously you need to check with your district to make sure that those are um, vetted reading interventions that you are allowed to use. Um, but even if they're not um, ones that you're allowed to use, they're, they're definitely ones that can be helpful for your students. Uh, so Duxters is one of my very favorite websites. Uh, so for um, when we do the women's history, um, when we do, um, you know, getting ready for kindergarten, uh, there are, when we do animal exploration, um, there are all kinds of books on Storyline online. And, and if you're not familiar with it, um, the, there are different um, people, uh, different actresses and actors and um you know figures um special figures that read the story uh out loud and so they have all been um they have all been shared uh the story online and then the Duxters one uh is so great i want to share this one so you guys can see and i do i hate that some of them have commercials but um so or ads so this one is really great this i use this one a lot for like uh like women's history month it, when it came up um explorers and ventures african-american history month usually when it's a special month it, i'll use these ones but they have different animal ones uh, and so when i click it um i can choose a story from i can choose a, a passage or an article about that animal and so it tells me all about the animal and it's it's vetted just for kids Kids. Um, everything in here is vetted for kids, um, and the advertisements are usually fine. Uh, but it's really nice because the students can read through, and you can choose. You know, if it's too hard for them, um, that specific one. If it's too hard for them, um, but the Dexter's one gives it a little bit more focus on where I'm telling them to go and where I want them to be looking up. Um, so there's lots of websites that do that, but Dexter's is one of my favorites. So the engineering and the Lego starter kits, um, one of the lessons that I love is uh, the Itsy Bitsy Spider and the Water Spout. So I bring in Legos, and if you can get them donated, you don't have to use the story starter kits. You can get them donated. Um, you can you know, write grants for Legos. Um, I have some Legos that we use for this. And so they had to do, we read the Itsy Bitsy Spider in the beginning of the year, and then they had to build a water spout for that Itsy Bitsy Spider. And some of the, um, some of the ways that they're building, it's just, it's just great to see them engineering, planning through, um, thinking about it. And then they can do a flip grid to share, you know, their water spout and hold it up. Um, another one of them is to build a habitat for the itsy bitsy spider um, instead of having him go up the water spout. <laughs> Uh, so these are some picture editing tools, um, pickmonkey.com. I'm not going to go there, but one of the great things is you can add layers to it. So I can add a layer on top of, uh, my picture to be able to, you know, support something or change something that I'm doing. Um, then to remove a background, um, to www.remove.bg is a great one to be able to remove, um, backgrounds. So these were nice if you, um, if you have students that can't have their picture taken, you can also put in Flipgrid, you can also do a little sticker on their face so that they can still share. Uh, but these are other ones that are the copyright free photos for you uh, to be able to get images that can be reused. So the music and art, I just have a few music and art ones, but this one is the Chrome Music Lab. And my uh, music teachers use this one often. So for different chords, um, for different melody, and this is the Chrome Music Lab. Uh, and there's lots of different pieces in here uh, that they are choosing to use. So such a great website. And then, of course, you are familiar with Word Art, the old um, Word Cloud uh, can be a fun one to test out and, and play with. And so you can use it for vocabulary words. Often I use those word clouds for vocabulary words. Um, 
Math and science. So I'm just going to take you through just a little bit of math and science. Uh, you're engaged. If you're not familiar with New York Engage Google Classroom, I you have to check it out. Uh, so they have, it's, it's so cool. Even if it's not New York standards or not your standards, it is okay. Um, I tell my teachers, they're the metric conversion. Okay. Well, my fourth graders are doing metric conversion, whether it's exactly that same thing, um, you know, that same standard. Uh, but this, this, they're all here for Google classroom. So if you use Google classroom, you can actually link right to your Google classroom. If you don't use Google Classroom, you can still view the assignment um, and you can still, you know, print out the assignment. Um, so it's a great, it's a great tool if you, um, if you need a bit more support with, with teaching those specific standards um, that sometimes our students struggle with. So our spatial relationship lesson, uh, and this goes with some of my gifted students actually did this lesson, but um, I've had lots of students do it, um, but my gifted students are the ones that tested it out first for me. So in Google Drawings, and, and you may not know this, but in Google Drawings, you can export out as an SVG file. And if you are some of my tech savvy teachers that do the 3D printing, um, I just did a cloud convert and I changed it to an SCL file. And then I had the actual print file for them to be able to print um, their modules, um, their actual 3D pictures that they had drawn. Um, you can also do some stuff in Tinkercad and there are some lesson samples there from Tinkercad that you can te test out um, if you wanna do some 3D printing. So measurement, we uh, we always make it a fun lesson to be able to see how the tower for Halloween, you know, for the pumpkin tower. Um, but you could put anything on the tower. Um, but the they have to measure it. So after they do it, they then have to measure how tall it was. Um, and then we talk about comparing their data. So um, which one is bigger? You can use Legos for area. And we do that often. I try to do um, that lesson with my fourth graders, sometimes with third grade too, when they do it. Uh, and then if you check out this website here, teacheronestopshop.weebly.com, uh, and this is slash math, but there are um, everything that I'm sharing today is also on teacheronestopshop.weebly. Um, so the typing lessons, um, the math lessons, the, uh, all the music lessons, they're all there too. So some other math websites that they can go to um, are here as well for area and perimeter. And there it is again. So it's teacher one, the number one, stopshop.weebly.com. Subject-based resources, the keywording website. Sometimes I'll just send my students there to check out some of the coding um, or to go ahead, you know, to a specific science um, place. Let's look at just adaptation games and play there. Uh, so it's a great teacher about added resources for you. Um, and you can add to it. So go ahead and at the very bottom, you can um, send a contact to me and, and add to it. If you have any questions or you need to find me, uh, you need to email me, go ahead. Uh, it's at apream, P-R-I-E-M, at ncmcs.org. So that's North Carolina, Moore County Schools, dot org. Um, or you can follow me on Twitter. I post uh, all kinds of lessons that we're doing throughout the weeks on Twitter uh, at Ashley and then underscore P-R-I-E-M. As always, it is an honor to be here presenting at the STEAM Summit this year. Uh, thank you so much for coming to my session and for watching online, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.